Welcome to the Chancellor University Education Series. My name is uh, Dr. Brian McElyea, and I would like to spend some time sharing with you some thoughts about systems thinking. Systems thinking is a, uh, a method of thinking in which you take the, the organization from all the different components and consider the intended and unintended consequences of your decisions. And with that, there's various models that you can use, and there's lots of them out there, but one that, we, that I, uh, I like to use that resonates well uh, with boards of directors that I share with is something called the iceberg. This is nothing that I've created. It was some, something that started actually back when uh, Peter Senge started with this field book, and then uh, others have taken uh, some liberty and, and modified it accordingly. And I'd done some, some work with a, uh, an organization that specialized in leadership, and a gentleman by the name of Dr. Jorgensen modified the model even more. And so what I want to show you is his rendition of that because I think it really generates some salient points and allows you to really think about what systems thinking really is. So we we'll start out maybe basically just thinking about an iceberg. And at the top of the iceberg, this piece above the water, we have events. Events are those single items that happen within an organization or within society. <clears throat> As we look below the surface, we see patterns. As we dig a little bit deeper, we start to see structures. And then we talk about mental models. Mental models are those that, that visual representation that you have in your mind about something. As an example, short people can't play basketball. That might be a mental model that you have. And last, at the very bottom of the iceberg, is something called the, or the vision. So let me give you an example of how all this plays out. You have a fire chief in New York City. The fire chief has five fire departments underneath him. As fires happen, each one of these fire stations go and put out the fires. Those are events. Fire chief's pretty savvy. He starts looking at this and he says, well, fire station B seems like 80% of all fires are happening in fire station B. Well, that's a pattern. And so the fire chiefs looked at this. Logical explanation is it's an inner city area. Lots of, lots of uh, uh, tr trash isn't taken care of, those kinds of things. So logical response to this, let's take some of our resources from some of these other fire stations and put over here since this is the busiest fire station. That is a normal response that we see in systems. However, what I'd like to show you is the fallacy of that response. In fact, 80% are happening. If you move these other resources to fire station B, you sub-optimize the system. So if you really want to change these 80% of these fires in B, you have to address the structures. Because a key learning point here is that all patterns are caused by structures. So <clears throat> as we begin to look at this inner city fire station, uh, we, we start to look at their, the area they serve. The, the, do, you, do you think that they have a fire suppression system in, the, in those buildings? Uh, I, I doubt it. You think they're using underwriter laboratory approved extension cords and heaters and those types of things? I, I, I strongly suspect that, that they're not. Also, do you think that they're using uh, the uh, trash removal and the, um, ha have uh, fire extinguishers placed throughout the buildings. So all of these structural sorts of elements are causing these patterns to occur, which causes this fire station to be exorbitantly busy over the other fire stations. So the fire chief could handle the patterns and move the, move the people around, sub-optimizing the rest of the areas, or for the, for on the structural side, he could address those kinds of issues, the trash removal, the fire suppression, all the things that we would need in this community. <clears throat> However, you still have to go deeper if you really want to change a large system. You need to change the mental model of the individuals within that community and the people who serve that community. To make that re be an accurate 
an equal representation for services provided in fire, in, in fire uh, safety as we do in all other communities. Well, it, as we move through this, ultimately, we can begin to change the vision, the vision of the community about the fact that it, we are going to put resources into this community because ultimately it's cheaper to do than to respond to these 80% fires all the time. So basic systems thinking model, the iceberg, you've probably heard it quite a bit, but the, the fire station um, uh, example hopefully gives you some a visual of how systems thinking is working. If, you, if, if this fire chief only addressed at the pattern level, you could put all the resources you wanted into it, but you're never going to change the fact that 80% of those fires are happening in this station. You have to dig deeper and get down into the structural level and then ultimately do the, the mental model and vision element. If you want to create a new future, you have to turn the iceberg upside down and, 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 and create a whole entire new iceberg over here with, with, a, with a new vision and then the new mental models and then new structures. As you move through this second iceberg, you create, you create a new future for the, uh, for the community, for the organization, or what have you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short segment on systems thinking. If you want to learn more, visit chancelloru.edu.